I'm Sam Vatnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The love affair of Edward, Prince of Wales, later King Edward VIII, and Wallace Simpson in 1936, is the stuff of romantic dramas. Alas, reality was a lot less inspiring. Even as she was being wooed by her regal paramour, and while still being married to Ernest Aldrich Simpson, who knew of the prince's attentions and even discussed the adulterous relationship with him, Wallace had an affair with Guy Marcus Trundle, a car salesman. So revealed documents released in January 2003 by the Public Record Office in the United Kingdom. Trundle is described as a very charming adventurer, very good-looking, well-bred and an excellent dancer. He lived at 18 Bruton Street in Mayfair, London, which was quite, quite a prestigious address. Simpson's first husband was Earl Winfield Spencer. The king met her on January the 10th, 1931, but he was decidedly not impressed. Even in the months after May 1934, when he met her for the second time, dined with her and her husband in their London flat and invited them to his country retreat, she did not captivate him. He did take her on a cruise two years later, unaccompanied by her husband. He tried to introduce her in court, but his father, George V, was outraged. Upon the king's death, the Prince of Wales became king on January 20th, 1936. Ernest Simpson, who was having a long-term affair of his own, moved out of the Simpson household in July 1936. Wallace was not the prince's first American liaison. He contemplated marrying another American, Thelma Furness, but then dumped her for Simpson. The British media, though perfectly aware of all the goings-on, reported nothing, almost, until the king's abdication. The European and American press, in contrast, provided extensive coverage of the developing romance. At first, the king did not wish to marry Simpson. He merely wanted to make her his consort by changing the law to allow for a morganatic marriage, that's a marriage of people from different classes with no rights of inheritance. Simpson herself thought of giving up the marriage. Yet finally they did get married after the abdication, and it was in France. Though Simpson became the Duchess of Windsor, she could not be addressed as Her Royal Highness, reminiscent of Diana, of course. Additionally, the king was not allowed by the British government to address the British people and the empire through the BBC. The government's constitutional experts wrote, if the king disregarded the advice not to uh, use the BBC to address the people, so if the king disregarded this advice, constitutional monarchy would cease to exist. The king is bound to accept and act upon the advice of his ministers. For the king to broadcast in disregard of that advice, would be appealing over the head of his constitutional advisers, the ministers. And the last time this happened in English history was when Charles I raised his standard at the beginning of a civil war on 22nd of August 1642, concluded the opinion ominously. Edward abdicated from the throne on 11th of December 1936, making an entirely different speech. After having abdicated the throne, in exile, not allowed to return on pain of losing their allowance, the couple visited Adolf Hitler in 1937. Simpson was thrilled to be entertained by her Hitler, but there is no proof of, of further contacts with the Nazi regime, with the exception of a telegram from Edward to Hitler urging peace. Edward, Edward was late, later appointed by the British government governor of the Bahamas. Recently released FBI files identify Simpson as a Nazi sympathizer, though. The FBI suspected her of having an affair with a leading Nazi and spied on her.